Casey and Luna here today. We are going to go take the new software update 2020.24.6.1 through its bases and do a deep dive. If you look up here, we've already done a quick overview so you can see what's going on and we'll catch you throughout the day. First up, we're going to try and see how stop signs behave. Uh, the car is still detecting plenty of trash cans. I haven't passed uh, any cones that I was looking for, but we did have, uh, it continues to identify a bunch of fossil cars as um, trash. <laughs> All right, approaching the stop sign. A little bit heavy early braking. It might be because it's on a hill. All right. Uh, I'm not sure how it would take that turn. It was a little too close to that truck at that speed for me to try out. So let's try another one. Uh, the reason I wanted to try that particular one is it's one of the ones where it, um, it does a double stop. Well, we've got another one coming up. Stopping in 200 feet for what? There's nothing there. Oh, you know what? There's a car on the side of the road. And maybe that's why. Every other time I've tried it, there wasn't a car there. All right, all right, it's just a simple turn. Yeah, this, this still needs work, guys. <laughs> all right, so here's the one where the car likes to stop in the street. So if there's no oncoming traffic, we'll see if it does that and if it's any better. All right, real, real heavy on the brakes lately. All right, so there's nobody coming. We'll approve it by pulling the stock. The car makes a turn and stops in the road. No improvements there. All right, uh, next will be from the road. All right, next up, I have stopped because the car in front of me has stopped because it's a red light. We'll see if the car recognizes the green and starts to go. Yes, yes it does. Well, sort of, it's still red. All right, we'll try the next one. I wonder if that was because it was a turn lane. Where we're at now is also a turn lane. So we'll try again later. It seems more confident on curves. Oh wow, it even avoided that motor oil container. I don't know if that was a fluke or on purpose. All right, yes, high curvature, but let's move over now. All right. It didn't cancel my lane change request because it had its own which was nice, but that's probably also a fluke. Usually what happens is it requests a lane change same time as I do, and it cancels my request. Oh, looks like we got an exit left. That's why it's jumping over so fast. <laughs> All right, uh, next time I see something. Okay, here we are approaching a green light, We're going straight through. The car sees us behind the car, turns the stop bar green, and we proceed through. So that is really fun because now you're only confirming lights that it's unsure about or lights that have just changed or apparently turning lanes. So we've got another light coming up. I'm gonna cut to it because this is a little bit of a drive. All right, we've got another green light. We've got a car ahead of us, it's getting away. Uh, the reason that my speed is able to be 10 over the speed limit, green light, there we go, is uh, this is one of those roads where it forgets to check because of how it's classified. All right, this light is also green. So first we slow down so we don't run through people. And then we should proceed through unless it turns yellow on us. Hopefully we also pass that flashing yellow light so I don't need to find one to do the test. All right, our light's green. This guy is stopping and turning in the middle of the road wildly but we get to keep our green lane and here we go. So I have yet to confirm a traffic light since we got off the highway. All right, another green light. The car identifies it as green. And now we just make sure it doesn't change. If it does change, we're coming to a stop. All right, the car has realized the type of road we're actually on and lowered our speed down to 35 very gracefully did not jump lanes there. Normally with that kind of lane marking, I might expect it to jump lanes. 
um, where it was just kind of far in before the dashes started. And there was a curb encroaching upon our travel lane. All right, so far it feels smoother at starting and stopping. We'll find out over the course of our deep dive if that's true or not. Here the car knows we're at a stoplight. It can't see it thanks to the truck. So it's marked the stop bar red. Let's see if when it turns green, if it goes through on its own or if I have to confirm it. All right, the next lane is green, so ours should also be. All right, so it's marked it green and it's gonna wait and see what the truck does. I may stop it so that we don't beach ourselves in the middle of an intersection that might change. I might, let's see what the traffic feels like. And let's stop it. For this light, the car will not automatically go because we're in pole position. However, I'm going to go ahead and pull the stop bar or pull the, uh, the autopilot stalk once it turns green to see how it accelerates on its own this, with this update. Typically what I do when I'm in pole position is utilize the P100D to its uh, probably about quarter to half throttle or yeah, half, half pedal of the accelerator pedal. Okay. That's acceptable. I, I could work with that. It's slower than I would go, but it's way better than it did quite a few versions ago. Uh, the one before the last one, and I think the one before that. And we're at the speed limit, so it won't go faster. Not while Otter Steer is engaged, anyway. Ah, the yellow lights, here we go. It sees them flashing on the screen. Do, 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 do. From quite a distance away. All right, I'm ready with my foot on the accelerator. All right, it keeps saying stopping for traffic control. I'm gonna approve it. And, oh, look at that. After two confirmations, it ignores it and goes through. Yes, much better, guys. Kudos. All right, green light, nobody in front of us. So it's gonna stop. I'm gonna approve it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna approve it. I had to wait for that uh, Dodge thing. All right, green light, and we should roll on through with this uh, RAV4. And we do. One more time. Pedestrian. All right. All right. Catch you on the next one. Okay, we're uh, gonna do another smart summon once this car passes us. A very easy one, it's gonna come out and come get us. Just a very standard smart summon. We'll try a more complicated one later if we get some time. Seems like he's out waiting for that pedestrian. Hopefully with the scar as it comes out. I'm not sure exactly what was going on here because my microphone decided not to record anything. But uh, what I'm about to show you is the rear side views and they work quite well uh, at speed. They're very functional. The colors are slightly off, but uh, they look the same as they do on sentry mode. So they're not bad. And they're very useful, especially when backing into a tight spot or checking to see if somebody's camping in your blind spot, particularly something like a motorcycle or smaller car. Left turn mania on the uh, two lane roads is back. 
Look, there's a left turn that comes up here. The car has tried to take three of them now. Not as aggressive as it was on 2020.20.5, but definitely, it, it definitely puts a wheel in the other lane. And uh, then it corrects itself when it sees the paint come back. So I don't know if it's just the construction uh, or the arrangement of the paint here in Maryland, or if it's reverted. Um, typically the protected lefts uh, have a little more paint on them than, than what we've been seeing here on the Ocean City Gateway. We just had another one of those lefts. I think what it is is the slow speeds and the way that they're constructed here is that they, uh, the lane gets wider before the paint appears and the car with its instant stupid centering in the lane before it sees why the lane got wider immediately takes it and then thankfully the paint is early enough that it realizes it and cuts back a little bit. Still really weird. And it's been really aggressive on these stops on this road, um, particularly the downhill ones, but still is not as bad as 2020.20.5. Uh, the routing has been great as far as the nav on autopilot and uh, the way it deals with the, uh, the folks on the road who perhaps uh, are heavy-footed, treat their accelerator and brake pedal like light switches instead of gradients. So far, I like it. Uh, we've still got some more driving to do with this. All right, this one's got the paint on it instead of just getting wider, so it probably won't do it. Yep. Oh well, we'll try another one in a minute. Let's see how it does with this uh, left turn when it pops up. Assuming it does. Yep, there it is. No, oh, it's got the dashes, so it won't do it. Ah, just trying to catch on camera for you guys. All right, now when the light turns green, the car should recognize it, and the guy moving in front of us should move out, and then the car should go through the green because it's uh, not a turning lane. Yep, it turned green, and the bar turned green because there's a car in front of us. And now once he goes, we'll go. Yeah. Oh, hey, there was the car making the left that it shouldn't have. And I think that's the left we actually do want to make. Yep. So the Easton Supercharger is right there. <laughs> uh, U-turn coming up. All right, you turn accomplished. <laughs> the uh, Easton Supercharger is a version three supercharger. Looks like it's hosted by the Royal Farms, just like the one uh, that we reviewed when we did the Ocean City Supercharger. Awesome. It is uh, what appears to be an eight stall. Yep, I see two boxes. We're at 18% charge though, so we're actually not going to charge just yet. We're gonna look what we wanna do for lunch, and then we'll come back at around 5% charge. All right, catch you when we get back. So our car just did the same thing that uh, was happening to uh, Dirty Tesla, uh, where the car is trying to stop for the light uh, that has nothing to do with us. It was a left turn light and um, blood ours. Uh, I pulled the trigger and it still wanted to slow down so I hit the accelerator and then once it saw for sure that it wasn't our land then it went ahead and proceeded. I was trying to roll in at 5% to the supercharger for you guys. Looks like I overshot it a little bit. The uh, the U-turn on the bridge made it drop down to three, which is fine because I actually wanted to hit 4% to give it a chance to um, I always drive better than it predicts, so 3% is fine. We'll see you at the supercharger. There were some traffic lights where the car did not proceed on green, even though I was following somebody rather close behind. I don't know what causes that, but you can feel it. The car starts to decelerate. It doesn't slam on the brakes or anything. And then you push this accelerator pedal or pull the, uh, the autopilot stock. Okay, we made it to the supercharger with 5% stage charge, even though the car predicted three. I'm a great, I'm a great fuel economy driver. 
won an award for it. Anyway, uh, let's go plug in. One of these stalls is broken. Hopefully I didn't pick the broken one. And we'll see what, uh, what we get from the charge curve. I was thoroughly disappointed by this version 3 supercharged experience. This car has been recorded on video at 170 kilowatts. And at this station here in Easton, Maryland, we only got 118 kilowatts. It didn't stop like it did in Lynchburg. That, that was a plus. So before I wrap this video, we're going to actually take tomorrow and go to Lynchburg since that's where I've achieved the highest supercharging on, uh, on this vehicle. And we're going to see if it still only goes to 118 or something else. So with that, I'm going to eat my dinner. So it has been suggested that you can increase the speed limit beyond the, or the set speed beyond the speed limit. That is not the case. This road is 35 and it's still holding and it did drop down to 35 when it hit this, this road and the previous road. Uh, there are more roads where you can go above the set speed by five miles per hour than there were before, but it is not a hard and fast rule that you can now go faster than the speed limit on auto steer with the traffic light and stop sign control beta turned on. The car is still very paranoid about left exits. Uh, it bumped me over here about a mile and a half out. I mean, I guess it's better than being too late, especially during rush hour, but eh. So it's at the Kiss and Ride park, parking area, not the one that we just showed you in the previous scene. So we basically circled back around. We're at the top again. Here is the correct entrance. That's a lot. Yeah, that's side. You see? Oh, right. Okay. That's side. So you don't have to pay to come in. Just turn right, as Luna says. Little tiny Tesla sign. Easy to find. <laughs> yeah, once you get the right parking spot. <laughs> Under 16, that's not bad. <laughs> in a nice quiet place like this, you can hear the uh, fans on the supercharger in it. It did kick up a lot once we plugged in. It was actually not audible before that. All right, so here's the two supercharger cabinets. Okay, we've come back to Lynchburg V3 supercharger. We managed to get the battery, as the car says, very low at 2%. So low, in fact. Let's take a look at the uh, notifications. Cabin overheat, we knew about that. Door open, that's okay. Uh, vehicle hold. Auto steer unavailable. I didn't see that one. At least the vehicle hold. Uh, I was hoping to get these ones here. Cabin overheat disabled, something about heat and AC. Let's see what else. Battery power very low, heating and AC reduced. And then it said something about the battery heater, but that's gone now. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, plug in and then we're gonna look at the, uh, the, the, the new charge cycle. Well, I couldn't find the anti-flicker on the GoPro. So let's get this over with. We did rinse the car a little bit. That doesn't look good. It does sound good. Okay, hopefully it works. That doesn't look good either. Car just says ready to charge. So we're gonna use another cell. We're gonna come over one more because this is the unit we used last time.
Oh, now it's getting ready to supercharge. <laughs> I'm not going to hit the Model 3. All right, so that's the same cabinet as last time. We shared it just like last time. Hopefully this one plugs and works. Find out. Ah, Model Y. So two Model Ys today. One there and one here. <laughs> All right, much better. Go. Uh, I guess she's never supercharged before. Uh, she parked nose in on a, uh, or maybe there's going to that one. All right, so we're going to 80. I'm gonna set this down on the tripod. Yeah. There we go. So this was the second disappointing charge on V3. And uh, I've gone ahead and put in a ticket to get a remote diagnostic because from what I understand is so far, up until the previous update, the P100Ds didn't get the same capping that you got on the 90 batteries and the 70 batteries. We'll see. And uh, on our way back to the apartment, we've got um, a V2, well, quite a few V2 stations. So we're going to try one and see if it goes above 110 kilowatts. But based on what I'm seeing from uh, scan my Tesla app, it doesn't look like it's going to go above 110. But we'll see. So I don't know if that's my car or if it's programming on the V3 superchargers, like maybe when they increase whichever ones are supposed to go to 225, they they lowered ours. I don't know. But uh, I'll do an update video on that, and then what I will do is I'll include this charge graph video, I'll speed it up, and I'll put it as a separate video because it's not that compelling for most people, but uh, you'll find it right here. And I'll probably put that up first thing tonight, and. Uh, then as I get the uh, the deep dive video and figure out what I want to say about it, we'll uh, include that. Also, the left turn, uh, where the car tries to make left turns into protected left turns, even though it's supposed to be going straight, it did not do that here in Virginia. It just did that on the way to uh, to Ocean City. So I'm, I'm suspecting it's just because they didn't have any delineation and, and the car saw the lane get wider and immediately tried to center then it saw the, uh, the paint come through and it snapped back. But uh, on the way out here to Lynchburg from uh, the Fairfax area, all of the left-hand uh, turnouts, they all had the, the square dots, the square dashes, the short ones. Uh, and then they went into the solid line so the car could very clearly tell that it wasn't supposed to be changing that lane. And that's what I've seen so far. Uh, let's see what we've done on this trip. trips. Boom. All right. So we have on this update, we've done 475.6 miles and burned almost 150 kilowatt hours at a really respectable for a P100D Model X, uh, 307 watt hours per mile. And so we're going to return back to home base and give you a summary and we'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, let's try this again. We're at Potomac Mills Mall, which is the Woodbridge Supercharger for anyone who doesn't live here. 29%, I'm not gonna bother to try to get it any lower. Uh, we should be over 100. Let's see, it's a Gen 2 Supercharger.
Now, if it goes over 110, then we know that it's just my programming for V3s. I don't know if it'll go that high from 30%, though. No. But it can. Will it? I don't know. It's going to be a while before I get it down low enough that I would peak out of V2 just because of the way I drive. Yeah, but it looks like if it's not the programming, then it looks like the P100Ds are also susceptible to rate limiting the same way that they are for the 90Ds and the 70Ds, which is disappointing. All right, so it is showing 108, 109 now on the screen. Ready. I'm not going to speed anywhere. Um, the temperatures, 102 on the coolant. Uh, inlet, sorry, 104. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, the battery is just lukewarm, 107 to one, 105 to 108. The pumps are going 100%, as you can hear. Well, you might not be able to hear on this mic that I'm on. Well, I mean, I'd rather be capped at 110 than 90, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to be capped. Uh, where's the BMS? There's the battery. That battery's just chilling. Taking in 109. And no temperature. BMS max charge, 107 kilowatts. Showing 109. Fully rated range is 266. Uh, vehicle shipped with 289. Rated range. So I'm down 30 miles in a year. <laughs> well, two years now, two years, it's 2018. And it's coming up on the same summer. Or same season, which is summer. Mm, cell amounts is again 60 millivolts. It seems to only do that at the start of the charge. It just takes it in however it can. Casey and Luna here again today. We are continuing our deep dive into 2020.26. Oh, we're continuing our deep dive into 2020.24.6.1. This is the longest amount of driving I've done for one of these deep dives ever, I think. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the uh, see if the car takes that exit to the grocery store again, and we'll see you on the road. Okay, so we're pulling up to the exit for the grocery store now. And hopefully you can see the screen, you can hear the clicks, maybe not. And then uh, you'll see that the car will... Okay, yes, navigate on autopilot exit is nothing new, but the next step is where it takes the turn. I showed you that in the previous video right here, but uh, just wanna see if it's changed at all on this, on this firmware update. All right, here's the Navigate on Autopilot exit coming up. There it is. All right, if it's reverted, it's gonna go straight at this uh, turn instead of signaling right and going right. Two thumbs up. The paint isn't the straightest. <laughs> <laughs> and go. There's no stop bar at the end of this exit. Okay, there we go. But there's a red light. And with the P100D, uh, I missed it. I would want to go and launch off. But oh well. All right, catch you next time we see something interesting. Here's a divided road where the car won't let me speed with the auto steer on. Even though it is divided, it's not classed as divided. So I'm pushing up on the speed which would be scrolling the wheel, whichever one on the Model 3, but it's not going. It's speed limit restricted to 45 miles per hour. As you can see, it is a divided road, but that doesn't matter.
Well, the car was willing to smart summon here when we parked. So what I'm going to do is record the screen and then we'll do a sync snap and then we'll try it out. Three, two, one. Well, I guess it beeps, so that helps too. All right, so I'm gonna leave Luna in the car. Then we're gonna try and call the car to us. We're not gonna go that way because in case it's the uh, double yellow lines that make it say that it won't go. I guess we should probably go behind it and make it a little more complicated a scenario because the one that Luna recorded on her phone earlier was just a simple left turn and come to us. So, here, hopefully it doesn't say public road. It's not too complicated, it's just a turn around, but if it's public road, I don't wanna be all the way down. All right, it says public road again, so there's that. But uh, the straight line summon that Luna did earlier seemed fine, so. We'll go ahead and call that a day. Overall, I'd say this is a solid update. Tesla mobile service is checking into my battery logs to see if the charging speed decrease is just me. They suspect it's the actual stations. I don't think it is because it was too widespread of an area to be the stations unless Unless it's the whole network, but I hadn't seen any reports of people getting slow supercharging, so I suspect it's just us. The auto steer around town, it does a lot of hunting uh, in between stoplights if there's no markings in the middle of the intersection. The, proceed, uh, the auto proceed on green if there's a, a lead car generally works very well. I'd say about 98% of the time it will go if there's another car, but sometimes I'll get a green bar and the car will still start slowing. I don't know what's up with that. And uh, a couple of the folks in uh, the various clubs I'm in have also reported the same thing. The Navigate on Autopilot seems unchanged. We didn't get to do a thorough breakdown on the Smart Summon, but we did a couple of basic tests and they seem unchanged or I don't want to say unchanged necessarily, but the, the changes don't seem visible to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this a wrap. This is uh, by far one of the longest reviews we've done. Let's take a look at the stats. We've traveled 667.9 miles, burned a total of 202.8 kilowatt hours, so that's two full battery packs, and when you look at my battery degradation, that's actually a little more than two full battery packs, because uh, this is a P100D, but it has 90 available to itself, which is 85 available to me. And we did an astounding 304 watt hours per mile, so that's pretty good fuel consumption. I want to remind you down below is our link to our Patreon. Every bit helps. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed and that when you're scrolling down, if that button for subscribe is red, turn it gray. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch all of this. And uh, for the uh, for the charges I did, I'm going to break them out into their own separate video. I, I, that video should be live before the one that you're watching here. So uh, you'll see a little link up there if you want to watch that. Otherwise, you'll have already seen the summary for what I saw in them. Well, thank you for watching. Catch you on the flip side.